Hey everyone, this is Alex, USA Days. Uh, so I've been asked, what should you learn if you're starting as a QA engineer? Uh, and I think it's a little bit difficult question to answer because what actually you will be, uh, what kind of tools you will be using, what you will be doing at work, how you will be testing things will very depend on the industry that you're in. Uh, the good starter, I put in some lists to give you some differences and explain. Uh, that's based on my experience. Other people might have other opinions. If if you can add to this list, please go ahead and put in the comments. Uh, but essentially, it looks uh, something like this. So uh, here is the list. Okay, <clears throat> so what to focus on while learning QA quality assurance, right? Uh, so I think first things you have to get uh, right is the foundation. So you need to understand uh, quality assurance and the processes involved in verification testing, right? You need to understand the software development lifecycle um, and what is the role of the QA, where you get uh, into actual action, right? What you need to do at each stage. You need to learn different methodologies, Agile, Scrum, um, Kanban, and others. You need to understand how to do bug reporting, what goes into bug report, you know, how they have to be structured. You need to, about, uh, need to learn about test documentation and uh, how do you maintain and show coverage, uh, what kind of documentation needs to, to be created for testing. Uh, also, you need to learn uh, about different types of testing, also what kind of testing you can perform, right? So this is, in a nutshell, the foundation that you have to cover first. So get the understanding of the industry uh, and what kind of different testing exists there, right? So just to, something that you can start building upon. After that, if we'll go into specific industries, and now tools might vary, uh, everything is going to be different from place to place. But if we talk uh, about web, mostly if you're testing web applications, web UI and so on, You'll have to think about DevTools, uh, how to use the Chrome or some other DevTools console, uh, get into the log, see networking, uh, that that's networking tab, what's happening in there. Maybe even look into the actual code of the web page if there's some any you know any issues there. Um, you'll have to think about also learning API uh, and how front end communicates with the back end in order to verify if there are any issues there. Uh, probably some HTML and CSS and JavaScript, so just the basics of it to understand the page structure if you need to look up something on the on the page, right? Uh, and then pick up one of the tools essentially, eventually when you start going more into automation um, to be able to, to test API like Postman. That's a great tool. Uh, if you're going into some more automation practice of actual fr front-facing uh, interface, Cypress uh, or some other automation tool, um, yeah, so this is, will be your journey, like as web, if you're focused on web, and web is still pretty popular. Uh, so I mean, it's definitely a good starting point. Uh, at some, uh, after some time, once you switch multiple companies, multiple industries, as a Q engineer, you will have a list of different tools and approaches. Uh, you know, you you kind of grab a little bit from everywhere. You'll you you'll know a lot, uh, and if you need to adjust to a new place, you kind of just dig into it and do research and learn more about specific tools needed. Uh, but overall, your knowledge, uh, the broad coverage of the tools and what needs to be done in each specific industry, it will grow. Uh, for mobile, you definitely have to learn and understand devices, uh, the hardware versions, that uh, software versions go on those devices, like operating systems and so, how to get logs, uh, how to use ADB console to get logs from the Android or uh, how to use Charles Proxy and some other tools of getting logs, right? Uh, if you go into automation, eventually uh, learn about Appium or more if you're on Android, Android Studio or Xcode to work with those. Um, yeah, so mobile uh, is very popular as well, uh, but it has some, some of the specifics uh, that, that are essentially only with mobile devices. Right. Uh, if you go in some place where there's a hardware and software mix, so they maybe they create some product that uh, both includes their own hardware and their own software, then probably you're going to have to learn Linux, uh, Bash, a lot of the embedded systems like Linux-based or Unix-based, uh, some networking, right, to understand uh, uh, how to connect those devices, 
uh, OCI model, so the layers, right? Uh, pro protocol uh, layers. Um, and how to build test beds, right? If if it's a mix of hardware and software, most likely you will be responsible to bring up those test beds and work with them, right? To verify that uh, the hardware and software actually works properly. Uh, if you go into wireless domain, so you'll have to use tools that uh, explore wireless, something like Wireshark to sniff traffic, for example, or iPerf or some other tools to actually generate traffic and measure throughput and such. Uh, you'll have to learn about IoT mesh networks, how to create those. Uh, and also, you know, wireless domain is, is vast. It could also could be mobile, and like uh, LTE, 3G, 4G, right? Or it could be Bluetooth. So there's a, really a lot of jobs in, in that domain as a tester. Uh, there could be also database testing, right? And you have to, then you'll have to know uh, if it's SQL based SQL, if MongoDB, uh, you'll have to work with developers, uh, how they create their requests and uh, uh, verify their database, right? So the 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 thing is, it's it's impossible uh, to learn everything. It, it 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 it's really impossible. Tools are changing, uh, new things always coming out. Uh, the types of industry that are there to be tested in, from medical industry to hardware to entertainment, gaming. There's it's really you know so many different things that can be tested, so many different tools and how it can be tested. So it's impossible to learn and cover everything. I think a good start would be is just to learn the foundations and pick uh, some starting industry, let's say web, and grab a tool uh, or, or one or two from that industry and learn it really well, um, and then kind of grow from there. Um, so you have to answer uh, some questions here, right? Where will you work as a Q engineer? Where you want to work? What industry were you gonna start? Um, because the industry will define the tools uh, in many times. And also what will be important is the company stack. Uh, go ahead, when you interview, you can always ask what is the stack, uh, what kind of tools are used, so you can get the answer during the interview, what tools will be used or already used, uh, the stack in the company, because uh, some places uh, do GraphQL, other do REST, some places do Java, other do Python. So that's also going to uh, affect you when you test, right? Uh, and I think uh, the core thing when you start as a Q engineer to remember is to is to learn fundamentals, uh, to understand testing in general, right? And you another very important thing that you need to do is to learn how to do research, aka Google and find answers, because that's one of the <laughs> one of the most valuable skills that you're gonna develop as a Q engineer over time. Uh, many times you will have no answers on how to approach something or you know there will be no documentation available in the company so you'll have to figure things out uh, figuring things out i think it's an essential part of uh, of qa uh, so if you if you're willing to work in quality assurance like after 10 plus years working as a q engineer uh, i always i still always google almost every day or every other day when i need to uh, find some answers, right? Uh, you can, of course, you can ask your colleagues, you can ask uh, developers, uh, management, that, that's, it's it's fine, but sometimes they don't know uh, the answer as well. Uh, so, yeah, and over time, you kind of going to build this skill to find, uh, uh, first of all, kind of double check everything, uh, and then uh, even now, like in conversations, if someone presents me with some uh, information that I'm not sure of, I don't take it as a fact. I start immediately researching and finding out if that's true, if that's so. So this kind of approach into uh, every, figure out everything and try to find answers will, <laughs> will transfer from your professional life uh, into your life in general. And also uh, another important skill that not many time mentioned, but still needed for Q engineers is to learn how to read documentation. So documentation is vast. It uh, could be could be external, could be internal. Sometimes company has very good documentation on the process. Sometimes not so good, but it is important to learn how to read it because I think it's a skill and so on. It requires attention. It requires to follow through. Um, so learning how to read documentation is also important when you uh, do verification and you do testing. So yeah, uh, I know it's hard to answer exactly. Uh, you know. 
what to focus on when you learn QA engineer. Uh, but I think it's a pretty solid start if you start with fundamentals. Uh, pick an industry and grab one or two tools that is used in that industry for testing and learn it well. And then you can kind of grow from there. Okay, uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any feedback, any ideas, any additions to the industries, uh, put in the comments. Let's discuss. Uh, this was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.